All right, y'all. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you're tuning in. I'm grateful to have you here. And we got Neil deGrasse Tyson and Pierce Morgan in the building today. And I'm sure this is going to be a doozy. I have no doubt about it. And quick disclaimer before we get any further, I'm a Christ follower, and I base my thinking and understanding of how life is supposed to operate completely on a biblical foundation. And I mentioned that because in an interview with Big Think, Neil Tyson said, so what people are really after is what my stance on religion or spirituality or God is. And I would say if I find a word that came closest, it would be agnostic. At the end of the day, I'd rather not be any category at all. And he's entitled that right completely, but I'm sure when it comes to this end times or 100 years left of, of the world sort of discussion, I imagine we'll, we'll have a different conclusion at the end of the day. So stay till the end if you want to hear my input and perspective. Let's get it popping. I am very excited now. I don't get excited by too many guests, but I've always wanted to sit down with this guy because he's one of the, well, he's probably the number one astrophysicist in the world, a rock star of space. In fact, even as we've been sitting here, he's been telling me what's on my own screen behind me, because to me, it looks like just a big maze, but he knows. And he is Neil deGrasse Tyson. Thank you for coming. You happen to be in the country. I just happen to be in the... And we happen to lure you to my studio, and I'm so happy about it. I just happen to be in the hood, as we say. Yeah. Before we go any further, what is this thing behind we put here for okay, you? Okay, so this is... Uh, these stars that are coming through, that's just special effects. But in the background is an actual image of the Milky Way galaxy. Really? And coming up right now is the galactic center behind us. And the center there is, there's, it lurks a supermassive black hole, dining on any stars that wander too close. Now, look, you have a gigantically large brain for this kind of stuff, right? You accept that. It's the same size as everybody else's brain. I just prioritize <laughs> what I care about differently from others. Well, I think it, what, what you're brilliant to do, you got this terrific book, which we'll come to in a moment, but you're brilliantly crystallizing the really important questions in life. One of which is, how long have we got here? Yeah, well, there are some ideas about that because we still don't know enough about the forces that will end it all. Oh, sorry. Uh, we might have 100 years on Earth <laughs> what? At, the, at the rate we're going. <laughs> really? No, sorry. There's Earth issues that require geopolitical solutions. Self-harm. Okay, correct. And then there's the universe, mm. the death of the sun, the collision of the Milky Way galaxy with the Andromeda galaxy, and possibly the Big Rip. How would okay? How would the sun die? Oh, the, the Big sun, Rip. Well, like any star, it will run out of fuel in its core, and it starts changing. It starts bloating and getting so large that it will engulf the orbit of Mercury and Venus and come very close to Earth. So imagine looking on the horizon and sunrise is half the sky. Okay, that would be terrifying. It, is this huh. even starting to happen? No, not yet. No, we, we have another several billion years. So don't, <laughs> if you're going to prioritize... What well, that's you, all right. That's a drop <laughs> intro, isn't We ain't had a billion years <laughs> yet. Yeah, to start with. <laughs> what, you, what you're worried about. Yeah, let that one go. All right. But there's another one, the big rip, that if the expansion of the universe accelerates at a continued rate and it goes unchecked, the universe will be expanding in... 22 billion years. It'll expand faster than the fabric of space-time can keep up with it. And it'll just rip. And I'm terrified by this. For 22 billion years? <laughs> Why are you terrified? You're not going to be here. I'm terrified. Nobody I'm terrified. you know is going to be here. <laughs> I just... Uh, it's okay to be scared of things that... You can we witness. stop it happening, the big rip? What are you scared of? We can't stop... Climate change, apparently. Are you worried about the big rip? We're going to stop the big rip right. of the universe? The big rip would be it. We're pretty incompetent in, on so many <laughs> levels. I, I would not hold that whole high hope for What about another that. threat to civilization here? I, I had the last interview with Professor Stephen Hawking, which was a memorable experience. I put his, his study in Cambridge University. And I asked him about the threat of, from AI, artificial intelligence. This is what he said. Oh, sure. Is artificial intelligence going to be the end of us? And if it's not, how do we best work with it? There is a greater danger from artificial intelligence. If we allow it to become self-designing, for then it can improve itself rapidly, and we may lose control. Now, I'm reading more and more about the potential for AI to self-design. Is it going to happen, do you think? There's no reason to think that that won't happen. The question is, what minute will that occur? Because the moment it becomes self, uh, self-aware and it can learn on its own, what, what it he, will learn exponentially. What did he mean, Professor Hawking, by, by self-design? Well, well, just consider, how long do you go to school to learn how to read, write, and do arithmetic? 
or lately it just looks like people just read or <laughs> write, but no arithmetic. Mm. Uh, how long does that, you're in school for years and years and years. Mm. A computer that is self-aware and has access to all the knowledge of the internet, it can build on whatever foundation it had in the previous moment to, to accelerate that learning. So it can acquire all knowledge and all wisdom in a matter of minutes. But are we empowering this? Should we stop? Should we hit the buffers on this there, stuff? There are people, experts, who definitely feel that way. I'm not as apocalyptic about it. I think AI is not, we're not going to build the one machine that controls everything. But right now, if you were told someone 20 years ago, I drive a car that can steer itself and tell me where grandma's house is to avoid traffic mm. in real time, they would say, that's AI. Okay? In the days of the Jetsons, they imagined robots as humanoid objects walking around doing tasks. They weren't thinking that the car was the robot that the telescope was the robot, that your coffee machine is the robot. They weren't thinking that. They had a robot operate the coffee machine, all right? The robot drove your car. So we, if we infuse AI in all the areas of our lives that serve our needs, then I don't see AI becoming centralized in a way that then takes over. Some people think that Elon Musk is AI. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know Elon. I'm not authorized. You knew him when he's only worth 100 billion. Uh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, I knew him when. Uh, he had a great line. He says, you know how to make a small fortune in space? Start with a big fortune. <laughs> that was a good line. But, but now he made a big fortune. I mean, he's doing lots of very interesting things in space. Uh, but one of the issues up there is that the space is getting quite cluttered with stuff, Ooh, including yes. Elon's. I mean, what's the answer to this? Yeah, it's not clear. And just today, one of the reasons why I'm in London is to attend a space sustainability summit. Look at those two words together, space sustainability. Uh, we see these tra trails of satellites going across the sky. They call them constellations of satellites, and that pisses me off. Because mm. a constellation of stars that don't move across your sky, <laughs> they took our word mm. and called naming their, their, their satellites after this. So, so there are thousands of satellites in the sky creating these streaks. And how dangerous is that? Well, first, it's ugly to those who want to just bask in the majesty of the night sky. Plus, it makes further space commerce hard because space gets crowded. Then, And some, some satellites have been actively destroyed. Mm -hmm. China did it first. We did it second. Russia did it third. And, OK, I didn't destroy your satellite. I destroyed one of my own but you saw it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Have you been to space? Uh, no, no. Would, would I, you like to? I, okay, so, you know the folks like... Uh, like um, Jeff Bezos. Yeah, yeah, all these guys. Yeah. So William Shatner. William Shatner. So if this is schoolroom globe, you know how high up they went? The thickness of two dimes. They're nothing. Really. Not so worth I'm, it. And I'm an astrophysicist. You're going to say that's mm. I'm not... Where do you want to go? Look, go to moon, Mars, beyond. Give right. me a destination that's not boldly going where hundreds have gone before. That's not a... Professor Hawking told me if he knew he had his last day on Earth, it was all about to end, AI or otherwise, he said he would, he would want to be with his family playing Wagner and drinking champagne. What would you do? Wow. OK. If, literally, I said to you right now, all right, you're right. The world is about to end, and it's happening in six hours. What are you going to do? I would say, what can I do with my intellect and those of others to prevent the world from ending in six hours? Well, but assuming you couldn't do anything. No, no, I don't, I don't assume that. <laughs> no, excuse me. OK? You have these photos of people escaping cities that are about to be leveled by a hurricane. Yes. What are you going to do? And no one is saying, why don't we tap the cyclonic energy of the hurricane, use that energy to drive the the power needs of the city, and then the hurricane goes away. You know who thinks that way? STEM professionals, science, technology, engineering, and math. Professor Hawking, he had this obsession about working out what the black hole was, right? What is your obsession? What's your weird thing you would love to crack that's never been solved? I, I want to know. Our equations tell us that if you go into a black hole, the time works out so that the future history of the universe you just came from plays out to infinity, and another space time opens up in front of you. So I want a mapping of all the new space times that the black holes are providing. So you're all basically obsessed with the same thing, black holes. Well, who wouldn't be? I, I mean, find it, them a little bit black. We're, we're obsessed <laughs> with black holes the way kids are obsessed with T-Rex. Yeah. Every kid knows a T-Rex, right? Yeah. I think it's because it's a threat that it can eat you that, that, that has earned its respect. Neil, it's a, this book, Welcome to the Universe, absolutely fantastically fascinating. Thank you. And, and, you, and, you are a remarkably fascinating guy. This image guy. is like the original textbook that spawned yeah. a series of books. Yeah. This latest one is the, the universe in 3D. Right. You have, there are glasses that are part of it, and the objects in the universe pop 
and if they, they transform from just a picture of a planet to a world as a planet. We even show the constellations, Brilliant. and you realize constellations spread in three dimensions. It's not just. I could talk thing. to you for hours. Sadly, we run out of time. The universe Neil, is big. What a <laughs> it is, and what a pleasure. Please Excellent, come back sir. again next right. time you're here. You got We'd it. We'd love to have you back. Thank great you. to great to finally talk to you properly. Ooh, there's a lot to unpack there, and it was definitely interesting. And respect to both of these gentlemen, Neil and Pierce, for being respectful with the discourse and in the wild social climate that we're living in today. Most people don't even allow that sort of thing to, to happen anymore. And this is what's needed. And even when we disagree, we don't have we don't have to have division and hate each other. And I completely disagree with what Neil is saying. And people think that it's a fantasy way of thinking to believe in God and to believe in a creator that made everything. But say you say you only know half of everything, then wouldn't that leave room for the other half of everything you don't know to leave room for a creator that knows everything that made everything? It may be a, a funky way of thinking of it. But one thing that I lashed on to is that, that Neil said... He was talking about the big rip and how in 22 billion years, he's afraid of that. It, you know, the world could be engulfed and, and swallowed up, something like that. But within a matter of minutes, AI technology can completely take over. Like, how do you have both of those diverse ways of thinking together in the same brain and the same nucleus? I, I, I just don't get it. Uh, but if y'all want to see this full interview, it's a full 50 minute interview. I'll link it down below in the description section. Um, again, conversation is always welcome. Uh, but if, <laughs> if I had six hours left to live, I got to be honest, I, I'd, I'd make sure that I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior and acknowledge the fact that he took on the cross and beat death for all the sin and the evil in the world, that God sent his one and only son. And I'm going to try to bring as many people into that as I possibly can, because if if all of this is, is it just happened, it just popped up out of nothing, then we have no no purpose here then what are you putting your eggs in a basket what are you what are you striving for what is the 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 parameters of, of ways of living and what are you actually trying to attain with this life is it just all nothing is that is that what it is and i don't think my way of of processing things and understanding this life thing is any crazier than what 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 they're talking about i think it's a whole lot less crazy than the, this black hole obsession and future universes i couldn't even put it all together the man is very intelligent but at what point do you acknowledge that that sort of intelligence really it, it, where, where's it getting you like what's it doing to further your your life and to bring people in and to evolve society in a in a right direction now i see the term billions tossed out a lot about how long we've been here or how much longer we got left but we haven't experienced a billion up to this point not once because you weren't there i weren't there to time stamp it nobody you know was there not even close so how do you have these things like radioisotope dating or molecular clock of mutation rates or any other line of thinking it's not from scripture it's sure as heck not from the bible the basic instructions before leaving earth so personally again you could disagree but personally taking it all the way back to genesis i believe we're closer to like six thousand years since creation so as far as scripture is concerned it teaches a young earth so as christians you got to stop twisting the word of god to fit this evolutionary uh standpoint and what what these scientists are, are saying about an unobserved past because none of us were there. You can carbon date whatever sort of nonsense you want to label it. You weren't there billions of years ago. Nobody was. So I suggest that as Christians, you stop calling yourself a Bible believing Christian and more so a world believing Christian if you cater to things like evolution and these billions of years ways of terminology because it's, it's just not true. And the Big Bang, that, that's the, usually what's tossed out there. Who's the big banger? Everything didn't just come from nothing. Nothing doesn't just explode and evolve into something. So if you're referring to in the beginning, God created, then absolutely, I'm with you. God said, let there be light, and there was light. So if you're referring to that big bang, absolutely. There was a flood. Noah brought people into the ark. Dinosaurs and humans did live on earth. They weren't, weren't separated by billions of years. None of that sort of nonsense. That's the way I think. That's what I know to be the case. And I'm going to have complete faith and understanding in that every time that I, I talk about it and, and the ways that I walk moving forward. Again, you could disagree, but also remember that who we count time by is Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. 2,022 years ago, Emmanuel was birthed into this earth. He was formed in the womb, in Mary's womb, by the Lord. So I, I don't even consider anything else, and a lot of people don't consider that at all, that we count time by Jesus Christ. Yes, there was a before death, but it wasn't billions of years. It was a couple thousand years. And I want to read something to y'all from the BibleProject.com because in regards to the end times talked about in scripture and it, it, you could try to break down and predict how much time we got left on this earth as much as you want to but at the end of the day 
you, you don't know what's going to happen. You you can't predict it. I can't predict it. Neil can't. Like, we don't know when it's all going to be over. Until the kingdom comes fully on earth as it is in heaven, we'll continue to have days described like the end of the world. Jesus quotes from Isaiah, who described the fall of Babylon, to describe the fall of Jerusalem. In this way, apocalyptic language serves a metaphorical purpose to describe one moment in history that happens over and over again until the ultimate fulfillment. Generation through generations, they're going to have their own perceived knowledge of, of when the end times happen and, and and things you may see uh, playing out in society, you may be like, oh, this might be the end. But every generation is going to have their own experience of Babylon. But it all leads up to the culminating moment. This is why every generation can see themselves as living in the drama of the book of Revelation. Every generation has been living in the end times since the resurrection of Jesus. Followers of Jesus fall in different places on the spectrum of understanding Revelation. So we should strive to understand perspectives different than our own. And if you disagree, I'd love to hear why in the comments section. And we can, again, we can have a, a differing set of, of views, opposing beliefs, and still be civil about certain things. So I'd love to hear what you think down below. But hey, this is fun for me, and we can rant on this for hours and hours. If you like what I'm doing over here, don't forget to subscribe, like, hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date on all future videos. Share this video just to get people thinking, put this in front of people, whether you got some entertainment, some, some value, some sort of knowledge from this. I appreciate you tuning in. If you don't want to share it, you don't have to. Uh, if you want to support the channel even further, you can buy this awesome once lost, now found shirt, Luke uh, 15 versus 3 through seven this is made by my lovely wife on her etsy store i'll link it in the pinned comment and the description section if you want to go get you some we got tees hoodies a run of different sizes you can usually get bleach or no bleach all sorts of options uh whatever you need we got it again don't feel the need to if you you don't have to buy a shirt you don't have to light you don't have to do any of that stuff at all just allow me to come on here and rant and freckle face take over your screen for a few minutes I'll, i'm just blessed to be able to have this platform but until next time i love y'all i'm praying for you godspeed i'm gone